Well, good morning, Lion Hearts. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion, live from Paso Robles. Well, we're up early. It's a little chilly outside, so I gotta wear some long sleeves today. But we're gonna head out to the coast. First, we're gonna head out and we're gonna go to Cambria. I think that's what it's called. And we're gonna check out a place called Nitwit Ridge. I don't exactly know what to expect, but I kinda do. And I thought you had to make a reservation online or I just wanted to make sure they were gonna be there. So I called and the answering machine called it the trashiest place in America. So I'm totally excited to see this. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. All right, let's get out of here. Honest to God, I had a great stay here. I highly recommend this place. Wine Country Inn. There we go, Cambria, Hearst Castle, that way. Well, we're definitely in the right spot. There's the sign for Nitwit Ridge. Let's go. I can't wait to see this. Well, here we are, Nitwit Ridge. In 1928, a man named Art Beale bought this property and with a shovel and pick, started digging and digging and adding and constructing things onto this property. He was a sanitation worker in Cambria from well, throughout the 40s and 50s, and so they say that's where he got a lot of the things that he spiced up his place here with. They also said he used to work at San Simeon Hearst Castle and got some of his stuff from there as well. So every day, top of the hour, from 10 to 4, if you come here, you can take a tour of Art Beale's masterpiece, now known as Nitwit Ridge. Art died in... 1992 at the age of 96 and he worked on this pretty much the entirety of his life. Now after he passed away, looters came and started to uh, ransack the place and break in and try and take things. So some new owners bought the property who had an appreciation for it. They loved art style and now they give the tours and they protect the place. So the gentleman who's going to take us on the tour is on his way down now and this should be a blast. And right straight ahead is a California landmark marker stating Nitwit Ridge. Is that the devil in the toilet? The guy built it out of junk, so that's what he collected. He lived in it until 1989 when he was 92 years old. It hasn't been lifted since some of the stuff's still in here. But if you like, you can head up to the plaque, it'll start to tour for you. I gave him two nicknames. One of the nicknames he liked, Der Tinker Paw. Yeah, he Der Tinker Paw. <laughs> but it's a nickname he was really known for. He didn't like that one as much, Captain Nitwit. I talked to a lot of old timers in town. Half the people in town, they tell me they thought he was dropped too hard in his head when he was born. So the town, they started calling him Captain Nitwit back in the 40s and it stuck. $500 for Really? It was all bare land? Yeah, the first thing he did, he said he dug the hillside out with an idiot stick. <laughs> which are called a pick or shovel. He said it takes an idiot to man it, but he hand dug the whole thing out. Then he just started collecting. He'd get all the rocks from the beach in the creek area. But he also collected the pipe. He said he collected all the wood. But when you start looking around, it looked kind of scary. Art, he said he even collected the electrical parts and wiring. Wow. When he lived here, all the electricity worked. It worked until 1997. Watch your steps aside, we'll drop off about an inch right there. Now, we're out here for a while. I was looking for the keys. You may have noticed the uh, pillar. They're tire rims. Oh! They're stacked up and concreted together. That's what's holding the place up. And all the big rock pillars, he'd use the tire rims like inside these rock pillars. Oh, no kidding. That was a structure, huh? Yeah, and you know, the small pillars, he'd go to like a one to two inch pipe. Now that would go down the rims into the ground. You know, it was about 15 years ago, we had a big earthquake. Yeah, right. I mean, like 6.5 earthquake. I had two people on a tour. We were inside this place at the top level during the earthquake. We ran out real fast. But it surprised me. Nothing happened to it in the earthquake. This stuff didn't even get knocked off the shelves. Wow. All the damage you do see, that's done from running erosion. Myself, I feel like a kid standing at my grandpa's workshop. My grandpa yeah. threw them jars. I guess I'm amazed any of his stuff's left. They put him in the rest home in 89. He passed away at the age of 96 in 1992 in Morro Bay. But being abandoned since 89, people come in and take stuff. How did he take being removed from here? Or being They had to drag him out. That's what he I figured. He broke out of the rest home two or three times and we'd make it back here. He'd hitchhike down Highway 1. He, but they gutted the bathroom. They condemned his house. He couldn't come back. For what's in my life, I feel tall around here. I'm short. Then you'll notice he put rebar in the arches so they're strong. Right. So it is stronger than it looks. 
And I think you may also notice he liked the abalone shells. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you know, throughout the process, all the steps. Now, he was never known as an abalone diver. He was actually the town's garbage man. For 30 years, the county paid him to pick up the trash in town. That was his occupation. In the 40s and 50s, with his truck, he hauled the shells off his trash where they cost them for their meat. But when he ran out of abalone shells, he started resorting to toilet seats. <laughs> <laughs> Which he used for picture frames. Oh, classic. Now, even if he liked you, you might end up in there. That's one of his idols, Will Rogers. Absolutely. But you're going to get to see him. He was on a TV show in the 70s called Real People. I have a four-minute video show you. So if you'd have come by when he was living here, I would go out on the balcony. He said he'd size people up by their looks. Now, if he liked the way he looked, he'd let you in. He let a lot of people in. But Art said the ones he didn't like the looks of. He'd have to start shaking his fist at him, say, move along, small change. <laughs> he'd, moving, he'd start throwing rocks, he'd throw it up here. Classic, my kind of guy. But you know, he likes to walk ladies through here. Yeah. Especially in the 70s, I'll get ladies, they tell me, um, oh, the old man, if he really likes your looks, he's liable to ask you to spend the night. I bet. And if that happens, <laughs> I think he this a woman's room. This is basically a guest room. I think he called it the woman's room as a color. At one time, this whole room was plastered in pink. And that's what's interesting. Oh, yeah, you can kind of see yeah, some yeah, of the pink on there. there. Um, he built a lot of his and her stuff, but he was never really known to be married or have children. You know, the longer I'm here, more I look around. I don't know if he could find a woman brave enough to live in the place with him. <laughs> this is Tinker Paul. It was a good... It's this napkin. It's actually from the 1939 Golden Gate Exposition in San Francisco. There's stories wow. he worked as a cook at this, which he's paid. People have researched him. He was also known as a long-distance swimmer. There's documentation in the 20s. He swam one of the Great Lakes from the United States to Canada. And there's stuff in here from the 40s up into the 80s when they put him on. Oh, wow. It looks like people kind of like him. There's no greeting cards left in there. Oh, that's great. Now oh, there's his, uh, some of his mail. Yeah. That's so cool. I don't believe anything's left. Say pull tabs. This is from old Coker beer cans from the 70s. And so people used to decorate oh, yeah. all kinds of stuff with the pull tabs. This thing's even older. This one's up to the radio. This was an RCA radio, maybe from the 40s. I guess it wore out on art. He salvaged it for his cabinet. Now, the shelving looks to be made from a real estate sign. But these are his books. That's what's left of his stuff. We come in here in 99. This room was ransacked. We straightened it up. But people are saying he had a bed in here. That disappeared by the time we come. I think the bed may have been kind of nice. They had to take it apart to get it out. And they left the sewing machine, a lot of this other stuff. They kind of like randomly picked it apart. Now you don't have to go in here unless you want it. This is how all the rooms used to look. This room we oh, have room. wow. This is a washroom. Now, there's a couple old washing machines still in there. And right behind this wall, there's a gas-fired water heater plumbed in. When Art lived here, he was hooked up to the county gas, electricity, and water. So oh, that's here. cool. Look at that. Yeah, that that's a, an old woman who lives in the shoe mural. I believe it came off a building in town. It was an advertisement. I bet it did. Wow. But as you can see, he never pulled permits. An inspector would come up here. I think they'd have a heart attack. Yeah. He called this the California Cooler. Art claimed the stairway stayed 50 degrees. This was his refrigerator. He <laughs> he milk, butter, and cheese sitting on the shelf here. No kidding. I'm glad that's no longer here, because that stuff is his stuff. He canned that stuff off the fruit trees, I think, in the 80s. I'm glad the earthquake didn't knock it off. Yeah. I like the, uh, the mirrored ball here. Nice touch. This is his um, applesauce, ketchup, soy sauce, garlic, and vinegar. That's what's left of his stuff. Now back here, if you watch your step, the TV's here. I'll show you a little video of him because he was not. Yeah. This room back here, he called the boar's nest like a wild pig. This room would originally have a flat roof. His roof was concrete. His concrete roof collapsed in the 80s, but I don't the roof fell in. We come in 99, there's no roof. The room is exposed. We did this a few years ago. It was bleak and we're going to have to do something again. But I have one picture. This area was his dining room. Then he had two big abalone arches and a half older bar that tried to a rock pillar here. Oh! He the dining room. You're in his living room. And behind you, it was complete with a homemade fireplace. In the picture, it wouldn't have bad look. And the man looked like it's decorated with abalone shells. It's just scary. It's what's left of a homemade gas-fired fireplace. He ran a gas line to an oven burner. Back oh, when wow. they were metal, he made his chimney from paint buckets. He has five-gallon buckets sleeping in the rock and concrete for his chimney. This video's kind of neat. Most of the people who moved here wanted a view of the ocean. Instead, some of them got a view of Art Beale's place. Art started hand-building his home 51 years ago and still isn't finished. Art's unfinished home may be his castle, but to some of his neighbors, it's a complete mess. It still is exactly what it started out to be. It's a network ridge. 
Art's friends nicknamed his San Simeon Nitwit Ridge, and they nicknamed his 81-year-old bachelor Tinkerpaw. The reason they call me Tinkerpaw, I tinker with my paws. But all of this stuff was done with idiot sticks, picking the shovel. And the only help I had was me, myself, and I. The three of us. <laughs> the ecologists in this area are making a champion of him. And I'm classified as a little bit T-H-H off upstairs in the hay. So a lot of my idols here is old Ken Maynard, the first cowpunk in the silent days. Mitt Ridge is nothing but a pile of junk. <laughs> it's jealousy. Ignorant envy is jealousy. Give me a heart with sweet smiles round me reading, with truthful and loving affections beating. Give me a heart of love with fondness creating. Now, um, I think you noticed on the video, Art seemed to have a pretty good sense of humor. Oh, yeah. He's still quite a few jokes throughout the property. Now, he has more of a state picture frame. This might be to compliment that. This is two-seated outhouse or bathroom. Uh, <laughs> Art said he put his and her toilets in there so he could sit uh, there and have conversations. Yeah, yeah, you can have coffee together on the toilet. We have pictures in the 60s and 70s. People would actually take their picture with him sitting in there. <laughs> and at one time he had the thing plumbed in. He brought water to the sink. His uh, toilets were tied into the house, which was tied in the city sewer. He did, however, build a two-seated outhouse right next to the outdoor barbecue, maybe for convenience. And then when you really look around, every time they had built the place, he would tell people while he's building it, he'd take a coffee break every 15 minutes. Which are described as a coffee cup filled with a bush beer. He would call beer cans building material. You start looking around, you see a lot of beer cans. Oh yeah, so he has to drink because he needs oh, the building yeah. materials. Most of them are bush beer. <laughs> but I've been here a while, it is starting to look like there might be more beer cans and abalone shells. You look at his house, sometimes you think maybe it was one too many coffee breaks that he built it. But it is kind of sad. Art was an orphan. He was born in Oakland in 1896. He said his father was Irish, which he never knew. He also said his mother was a Klamath Indian. He claimed his mother died the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. He's an orphan he's 10. But he's never known to be married, have children, brothers, sisters, any family. And this is the reason they wouldn't let him stay here at the end. This was up to his indoor bathroom. When they put him in the uh. rest home, they gutted the bathroom, condemned the house. He couldn't come back. But there's one time he did have a plumbed in tub and shower. But I get a lot of people telling me it really didn't matter that he had a tub or shower. He couldn't stand close to him long. Oh, I bet. Well, he said he only took a bath once a year in celebration of the rainy season, whether he needed it or not. You know, I'm thinking between that and the pickled garlic, it might have been pretty bad. Oh, look at this, though. Did he get in here? He's known to like animals, which reflects in the collage. Yeah. Sure, we do think kind of like the ladies. But the longer I'm here, I think his true love may have been bathroom humor. He has outhouse jokes. <laughs> 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 Wow, this is amazing. This is what's left of his bedroom. Now, there's pictures of carpeting, a bed, most of that. Oh, that's like clothes. His clothes are so in here. Now, he was the garbage man, but he was also known as a cook. There's stories when he was in his 80s, Cambria Pines Lodge restaurant, he'd get busy to cook there. I kind of believe that story. I think that's cook to the form. He's oh, yeah, yeah. Coat. Chef's aprons. Anyone Chef coats. Pants. Yep. He lets you in. He'd want to cook for you. Now, a lot of people I talked to when he was cooking, but the brave ones, there's people tell me he was surprisingly clean around food and cooked pretty good. Really? That yeah. is surprising. Know, and everyone's saying, you know, you'd visit him. Half the time, it's all he'd reach in and nothing to be on under it. The bathrobe. I have neighbor <laughs> ladies. House. They said when he got real low, the bathrobe, that's all he was wearing in town. And he they probably sweating. lost the uh, the belt to it at some point, too, I'm oh, guessing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the rest of a little faster. Look at that, 1962 calendar. I guess he probably didn't need to uh, to worry too much about what was going on. No. Wow, look at this. Look at his, I mean, that's great. Look at that old lamp. I know, that's, great. that's amazing. I love this kind of stuff. Little uh, California pin there, button. Some of his old flowers. Wow, look at that old chair. my favorite room in the kitchen. He made a simple skylight and corrugated fiberglass, but it was eerie. I come in here in 99, I almost felt like I was breaking into his house. Those are his canned goods still here. Oh yeah, it's tuned on everything. Now you wow. know he's 92 years old when they put him in the rest home. I don't think he's feeling too regular. He's got some Metamucil in there. <laughs> What's left in here in the bedroom? It's You get a little sense of feeling guys level with the stuff that's left. 
And then it's the more you start looking around. He's a funny bat, but here he salvaged a baby stressor for kitchen built in jewelry. Oh yeah, yeah, you can see the little uh, little images on there. Him, stuff like this. I was going through this drawer. You never met him? You know, this is research and stuff. I was a kid growing up, my grandma used to have a drawer full of strings, buttons, zippers. People in the depression right. in World War II and never throw anything away. This went away in the 70s. It was called Blue Chip or SNH Green Stamps. It's with the trading stamps. Now it's sad. He was fired as the garbage man in the late 50s. He struggled with money. At one time he owned the property next door when he built the house. He lost that lot in the 60s for property taxes. So late 50s on, he had financial trouble. He went to rest home. People come in and did some vandalism. But also been water damage. We fixed the roof. It had linked in here about 15 years. It stayed in. Probably done working in here because I don't know if you noticed his stove. It almost looks like it did in the video from 77. Just a lot dirtier. What's really kind of interesting, I've been here since 99. We never have trouble with cockroaches. There's no rats, mice. Really? You know, I think it's so petrified now, nothing wants it. He probably scared them all off. Yeah, but you know, when he went to the rest of them, I am surprised that they got That's honey, there. isn't it? There's syrup and flour in here. <laughs> and people are saying, you know, he was bedridden the last six or eight months he was here. They liked him. People come in and they try to clean up. He'd scream and yell. He called it nature's artwork. Oh, I bet. <laughs> I was a kid growing up in the 60s. Like a lot of people. My grandma had a bedspread like this. I can't open this side, but you'll notice the wallpaper in here is mermaids. Oh, yeah. When you look around, even though it's romance or junk, he seemed to gravitate towards the pink flowery stuff. But at one time, he had asphalt-type flooring squares in here in the kitchen, carpeting the bedroom. Especially in the summer, I give tours to people that come up here in the 60s, 70s, eat with them and stuff. It sounds like, especially in the 60s, it was clean. He was always working on something. Now, this was probably his front door. There's pictures he had a 6 or 8 pink glass door here. I think this is the front door because it's high work. It's like an entryway. But if you watch your step, I'll take it up to the garden. I don't know if you've been noticing all the pipes or handrails. Yeah. All the pipes, this was actually his plumbing system. All these pipes would carry water. They would work up until 1997. He had water in all the handrails. Then you know our, he did say his brother was a child. Now he said he was an Indian all his life and he lived off the land. He's plunged back here regardless. People tell me he used to be real nice. They said he'd grow corn, artichoke, squash, and all these plots. What's funny, the city water hasn't worked since 97. We don't water anything. But he has fruit trees that are fruit. Between the animals and groundwater, New River Chapter has its stuff itself. They haven't recorded. What said he liked animals more than people? He said animals were his friends. In this garden, he said he had a big problem with gophers. You'll notice he built a planter with the tabs turned out. He said the wind would blow through there. Whistle would scare gophers. It wouldn't have to poison Oh, that's so smart. Yeah, I've been here a while. I think that's just a good excuse to take another coffee break because it's not working. It might even attract them. They dig out the cans. <laughs> I didn't want neighbors. And if you stand right here where I am and look out through the trees, this is why he didn't want neighbors. You can see the ocean out there. He used to have an ocean. Oh, yeah. His kitchen window. Their house, the trees, the blocked his view. Oh, so when the neighbors came, they blocked his view. But he couldn't waste anything. He pulled the insulation out of water heaters. He insulated the house with water heater insulation. It's a drummy cut in half, turned into a wheelbarrow. <laughs> That's what's funny about this. Homemade wheelbarrow? That yeah. is awesome! This looks like the only thing he wasted on the whole property. This is what's left of his original house. He built and lived in this when he first came here in 28. We have a picture of this taken in 1931. It was in one piece. It had a whole upper wooden level. There's a front of the Oh, it in. looks like it's just fallen over yeah, almost. Yeah, it had a living room about where the tree is. That overgrowth is over the kitchen floor, and that overgrowth is over the kitchen sink. Oh, the that's a kitchen sink. Jeez. We see the bit of roof there that's over his bedroom. What's up to his bed and clothes still sitting there? I do talk to a lot of old timers. Who is this part of your property yeah, or his? The county had me put this up because it's cleaned up. They want people falling on. Yeah, it makes sense. The old timers, those they said, Art would always talk about a woman. He said her name was Gloria. He'd tell people that said he Gloria was the love of his life. Now Art said him and Gloria they came here in '28 from San Francisco. He said she never liked it here as a boonies. He also said, Gloria, she took as many coffee breaks as he did. Was really? Around oh, a good worker then. I know it. Now, he <laughs> told the neighbor Charlotte, Gloria and her mother cleaned out his bank account one day, left, never came back. Oh. He said that's when he lost it, started building Newway Ridge after Gloria left it. Now, we hear stories a tree hit this in the 60s. What's interesting, we did have it cleaned up a few years ago. In the bottom floor, we found three women's shoes. They're rotted soles with their high heels still in there. 
And over the years, I walk a lot of people through here. He let in 99% of the people that I remember seeing his two-seated outhouse. He seemed to take people in the woman's room, kitchen, living room. He didn't bring people back here to talk about this place. Really? You know, and the neighbor Charlotte, she said all he ever called this was his Laos house. His Laos house. Yeah, so I think maybe Gloria turned him into Captain Nitwit. Yeah. I think he'd want to salvage the rock, the wood, something. Yeah. Oh, you think this was a memorial to his relationship back he there? Just walked away from it. Just let it go. Man. Oh, yeah, man. That's so interesting. That's very astute. I hadn't thought. I mean, that's that totally makes sense. That's his way of getting over it was just was to let the house. There's still a debris, but there's a, he, left, he left everything in there inside the jars, everything. Now, when the pipes would carry water, they'd a little drinking fountain here and there. I wish it would still work. drinking fountain. That's great. He probably ran as much like Chrissy's water. People soon as put together, he had it lit up as pretty at night. But the longer I'm here, if I was on, I would have tore my first house down and just added on to it. Yeah. Of these trees, this has the best view on the property. And it's set back off the street. It's somewhat private. He went from that so to being a roof. This is what a lot of attention. This was like the entryway roof. There was a front door there. The living room was here. A bathroom, kitchen, and his bedroom was in the back. Oh. But he went from that to being obnoxious and wanting a lot of attention. Something happened to him from house to house. Now we do think in the 60s a tree had fallen. It knocked a wall down, but you can see a bed in the hillside are washing machines. Underneath all the overgrowth, there's engines, gas tanks, tires, junk. Lots of, of coffee break cans, cans back there, too. Yeah, they everywhere. Junk's probably what's behind all the walls. The people that are left, the liberty's a garbage man. Contains he lead. The trash, you never go to the dump. Three or four times a day for over 30 years, this was a town's unofficial dump. And there's still a few things left. That's old gas pump door. Yeah. There's a straight eight engine head over here. Then there's an SH green stamp sign. He's back wall in the storage room. But I talked to a lot of people that were up here in the 60s and 70s. Those people, they tell me back then he had stuff everywhere. He sounded like a hoarder. That stuff had disappeared in the 90s. When they removed them in 89, people come up and started taking everything. But you see this little gazebo? He'd call that the wedding chapel. I think maybe he built that hoping the Lady Glory had come back. But I was giving a tour of you. That's fascinating. He said he was up here 45, 50 years ago. He said the day he was up here, his friend got married in the wedding chapel. I hear crazy stories. I wonder if maybe that's why he, you know, as crazy as it sounds, that's why he wanted to keep coming back, just thinking at some point she was going to come back. See, he might have. But um, the 60s and 70s, Highway 1 was full of hippies. This is a hippie man. There's a lot of people up there. So I don't know if other people are actually getting married in there, just saying they were. Yeah. The longer I'm here, more people I talk to. I think he might have been married in for more building materials. Oh, you yeah. You make a donation to the uh, property, and you, yeah, yeah look at all these abalone like shells. There, yeah. But um, you call that the wedding chapel. Now, if you take a look at this, can you guess what this used to be? This used to work. Huh. Hmm. It was a homemade fountain or waterfall. The sink would actually fill up with water, run into the sink, and then go into his bathtub, his bathtub there. It was a working fountain or waterfall. After that, that thing worked. This thing over here in its better days, that might have been some sort of a bird bath, because you'll notice that's the same pipe or tubing coming off this valve. Oh, and yeah. Bird bath on here. I think he turned this fountain or waterfall on here. All this stuff looked like it was plumbed in. But then when he was a trash man, there's actually a street up here behind us. He used to have a driveway connection to the street to wash out in the 70s. But in his prime, he'd drive his trash truck down here and unload. He'd make slides out of corrugated metal. He was sliding everything heavy from top to bottom. <laughs> like making just a, yeah, like literally a right slide. There. But then wow. he didn't need or use, he buried. Because it was back in 95. A man drilled up here. For 20 feet below us, they hit layers of junk until they hit groundwater. The whole pad, even beyond wow. this bit, this is all a 20 foot land. That's how he created the level up here, I guess. Yeah, he just kept building up with junk. And um, he lost this property over here in the 60s for property taxes. Probably the same time he lost those other lots. So his property was huge for 500 yeah, bucks. I mean, that's a lot of property. Really. Now, a couple years ago, we had people up here from Hertz Castle. They say this is one of the few remaining pieces he got his hands on from the Hertz Castle that's still here, this concrete piece. Oh, I'm surprised they didn't try and confiscate it back yet. I know. Well, because they said, oh, it was probably damaged back then. They throw away a lot, and I have recordings. So oh. Art said when he came here in the early days, he owned his truck. He said they hired him at the castle for a couple years to haul stuff where they're building the place. Old-timers are saying, when it's put together, he had some nice stuff. Most of it's gone. But the people in the castle, they say this was a few remaining pieces. But they said it was probably dead. There was so much stuff and so much throwing away they were doing. And then he'd get a hold of whatever he could. Those are old bathtub legs. Claw feet turned upside down. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can tell. Then there's a plumbing part above that. There's car parts back here, refrigerator shelves. In older pictures of the place, that have a lot more rockwork and junk. 
That stuff just seemed to disappear over the years. Now, do watch your step coming down. It's kind of steep. What we think happened to him, we think Art fell down up here back in 1962. He said he was hurt, had a doctor bill of $500. He borrowed the money from a man in town and paid the doctor, but he never paid back the loan. In 1975, the man got tired of waiting for his money. Lean the property, he's going to tear it down. That's when a group of people formed a foundation. Now, these people paid off his loan, but they put the property in their name, so he lost it in 75. Uh. They let him live here, but he got mad and quit working on it. The people never worked on it, it kept falling apart. So in 1991, the group was hoping the town would take care of it. They tried to give it to the town, the town refused it. The counties never wanted it. It's been a California state landmark since 1981. The state won't let you tear it down. But the state doesn't own it like they own Hertz Castle. So they don't give it any money or help you take care of it. They just make building codes different. So the way it can stay here, it has to try to take care of itself by giving tours. But I have a recording. Art said Hertz Castle's manufactured. This is just junk. So to me, it's a poor man's castle. Yeah. But the reason half the people in town may not like it, he'd do stuff. I don't know if you noticed that house. Yeah. Cool teacher originally built that house. Now she passed away. The daughter had a daughter sold a couple years ago. That lady's daughter used to tell me, she said her mother and Art didn't get along too well. There's a door beyond the tree. She said half the time her mother would go out that door, he'd be sunbathing nude out here. Oh. The longer I'm here, I've been looking at all these houses. I think they're building them all about the same time. Oh, yeah. I'd have been thinking, you guys are going to be looking down on me. You're going to have to see everything. Yeah, that's his, uh, that's his revenge. Now, that's not the original, but we have a picture. At one time, he had a toilet on top of the roof. And a chair met on the peak roof. Oh, my gosh. How did I not notice that? A big chrome toilet. He'd have too many coffee breaks. Sometimes he would sit up there in nothing but his bathrobe and yell at everybody looking at the place. That is hilarious. But the locker I'm here, I'm just starting to think that's a throne for his castle. Here I am on Art's roof. <laughs> Look at the top, like the weather vane, that is classic. God, man. I love this guy. I know it. This guy's amazing. There, you can see he's got an old castle inn sign he didn't use. The crow's nest? The crow's nest? Yeah. Is that him? Is that supposed to be him? Yeah, I'm not done. I'm going to finish it. I might That's great! The I might put him on the toilet. So you're adding on to it. I love that. But now this here he called the crow's nest. He'd bring people out of this. When it put together, it was nice under the redwood. Oh, yeah. The redwood was in a planter which it busted out of. This was his patio table. He had a wooden cable spool on top of tires. His wishing well's still here. But then there's pictures. This is like this is a greenhouse. Because next to the greenhouse, he had a potting shed. There's water coming to a sink. But you can see the redwood's about to finish off the potting shed. It's going to take a little patio. Yeah. But we just come with porches and roots. They're doing their damage towards the garden. None of the roots are headed towards the house or come up to the bathroom. Art would tell people the tree grow over ground spring. And think maybe so, and the water's taking the roots towards the ocean. So they've been lucky with this side. That's what's a pop out here, come up in the back room, it's all moving that way. Wow. That old bread box up there. See, so probably had stuff stored in there. There was probably all kinds of Oh, God, you're right, those are. But I had those a couple of up here. This woman had a rice and tea. Oh, my gosh. She started saying, how do you know the lady Gloria really left him and those aren't fossilized uh, bones? Those look like bigger than uh -huh. human no, bones, No, they are, though. I think, guys. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> wow. Now, if you take a look at this rock, is there a of an animal head? Yeah, it looks like an alligator head. Alligator. And look at the precious center of that rock. It looks like a paw print. Yeah, oh my gosh! Then if you take a look at this rock, it kind of looks like an owl or a frog. Most people think an owl is the big Oh one. yeah, it definitely looks like an owl. Then right below us, you'll see that concrete deer you saw in the video. Yeah. I was thinking of one time Hurt's Castle had a zoo. This might be his habit of the neighborhood rock and saw the food of the rock. Oh, that totally makes sense. That's falling over. I here, go back to the earth and just include for his friends the turkey vultures. He didn't get to do that, but they put his ashes around the redwood. So I was going to ask you, I had read online that his ashes were scattered around one of the trees. There's the redwood right there. So he made it back here whether he knows it or not. He's up there right now. Oh, that's wonderful. And you know, to me, this important is Hurt's Castle. William Randolph Hurst was spending all that money. Back in the days, my grandparents were a little bit more like our deal. They had to make do with what they had as most people. That's what I kind of like about the place. Oh, I love this. I mean, this. yeah, this is just... Wow. Well, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Oh my god, it. I love this place. I'll be back. Well, since we're pretty much finishing up the tour, I wanted to stop back here and just thank Art Beal for making this place.
This is where his ashes were scattered. Like he said, he always wanted to come back here. He kept trying to come back here, sneaking off and when he'd break out he got the last laugh. He finally Yeah, he finally made it here. Yeah, as we leave here, let's just show the sign here because it's kind of cool that California was willing to make this a historical landmark. Nowadays you just never know. They especially something that's not up to code, you could definitely see them deciding it had to go and good on you California for understanding the appreciation. Well that was awesome. I highly recommend you come out here and take this tour. Leave a little donation for them. Since it's a residential home in a residential area they're not allowed to charge anything for souvenirs or tours or anything like that but they definitely appreciate a good donation to help keep this place around so. Enjoy Nitwit Ridge, friends. Well, gang, from Nitwit Ridge, that's it. I wanted to thank Metal Empress 13 for becoming my newest Patreon, and I hope you all enjoyed this vlog. If you're out in Cambria, make sure you stop by Nitwit Ridge. Have a great night, everyone, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>